What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over shooting our weapon. Now yes, I know we already had this stuff working in the past, but we've changed our system up a bit because I'd gotten a lot of requests. I say a lot, but it was really probably two or three. However, I think they were very good requests. So they, the requests were to change it so that we weren't just using the first person template. And while the first person template is pretty good for getting the basis down, it's not really great for expanding upon it. And we spoke about this. The way the weapons are designed, the way that the first person projectile is designed, the way even the camera is positioned is not really great for being able to make our own game in a way that we may want it. So we went through and we kind of remodeled everything. We took out the the way that the character was working and replaced it with our own mesh and our own functionality. And today we're gonna to be going over firing our weapon with our new gun that we have and in place, you know, put in the sockets and all that. So there's still plenty we have to do before this shooter is ready to go. But I do wanna say on top of this being a cool episode because we can shoot, although I'm out of ammo, it is also a good episode because all that stuff we commented out and I told you to remove, we're going to fix almost all of it. There's one thing in particular that we're going to leave for now, but everything is going to be back to normal and fixed after this episode. So we're going to go ahead and get started so I don't waste any of your time, but I wanted to let you guys know those things because I think it's, I think it's worth it that you know kind of the agenda and why I did things the way that I did. I felt that it was the right move to kind of recreate the first person template off of some other things as opposed to just using it as is because it was going to cause us more headaches down the line. So I do apologize for any confusion or any inconvenience, but now after this episode we should be back on track. So as for creating projectiles and shooting them and actually spawning a different object that could have a different value more than just a different mesh, right? In the past we were, we were able to shoot different bullets, but we were shooting them based off of, we were just changing a skeletal mesh. Well now, we can actually make different objects, different projectiles that we can shoot and change the values to. First things first, we're going to want to make an ammo class. So in the code, we had something called base ammo before. And this is fine, you can leave this, but this was really an ammo pickup. Uh, the more I thought about it now with our new system, since we're going to want to be able to change ammo types and say deal more damage or different things like that, Base ammo should really handle uh, all the different values of shooting a bullet. So if you want to call it base bullet, whatever, that's fine. But we're going to make a new C++ class. I'm going to call it something like base ammo. If you already have base ammo because you followed the series and you had the one that we made before, then you won't be able to make a class with the same name. So I'm going to show you a cool little trick. I made something called base ammo pickup, which is what... This is essentially our base ammo from a few episodes ago. This is the ammo pickup on the ground. Let me show you how it works. These are ammo pickups. So this is what we were doing. We were walking into this, this little ammo box and we were picking up the ammo and adding it to our weapon. All right, and that's what we were doing in the past and I was calling that base ammo and base ammo BP, okay? I've gone ahead and renamed these because I think it makes more sense for the series. However, you don't have to. Feel free to leave base ammo as it is and call the projectiles that we're spawning out of our gun like base bullet or base shot or something like that. You don't have to necessarily rename your stuff. But I think it makes the most sense going forward so that I don't confuse anybody. So this box that we had, this is what we created a, a few episodes ago. This is called base ammo resupply BP. This is very simple. You can rename any blueprint very easily. So I'm going into, this was what was previously base ammo BP. And if you're following the series exactly, this is what you have titled base ammo BP. Right click and rename it and call it base ammo resupply BP. Basically ammo that we spawn in the ground or an ammo crate that we can grab ammo from, anything like that. Just so there's no confusion, I went ahead and did that. And we're also going to change the parent class here in a second because we're going to make a new code class. We're going to add new, new C++ class. We can do it off of an actor. And I'm going to call this base ammo. But I already have base ammo. So what I've done is I've called the new class we're making, sorry, <laughs> base ammo resupply, if I could spell. And that's what I called the new class that I made. Okay. 
or you can call it base ammo pickup, whatever is easier for you, and then create class. Now, to keep things as simple as they possibly can be, if we go into our code, after this gets created, you will now have a base ammo and a base ammo pickup. We have two classes. The one we created previously was called base ammo, but base ammo shouldn't really refer to the pickup, it should refer to the projectile coming out of the weapon. So because of that, I'm gonna move some things over and we're, I'm gonna show you exactly what I have in each of these. So this is what my base ammo looks like now. Remember, we're talking about the projectile. So the projectile should know the ammo type. While it is important that the pickup knows the ammo type, it's more important that the projectile does because if you're accessing a weapon and you wanna know what ammo type it uses, you don't wanna know what, you don't wanna to have to access a pickup item or some sort of object on the ground, right? to grab the ammo type of the gun. The ammo itself should know what type it is. So we're gonna put the enum in the base ammo. Well, we're going to leave it in there as it was. Okay, the rest of the stuff can stay the same. Just note that I've removed some of the other variables that are not necessary and I've put them over in base ammo pickup.h. Okay, so I've moved ammo amount and ammo type to base ammo pickup because we don't really need to know the ammo amount when we're referring to the projectile ammo. You're probably only shooting one at a time. If you wanna shoot more than one, say it's a burst mode that can also still be done one at a time. It's one bullet coming out at a time. And if you wanna have a weapon that shoots like maybe a double barrel shotgun, you're like, oh, it shoots two shells or something. That could also be handled separately because for the weapon itself, we can just deduct two ammo and spawn two instances. There's not really a need to have that in the base ammo. But the base ammo pickup is still useful to know how much ammo we are getting back when we pick this up. If it has 20 bullets, we should retrieve 20 bullets when we get the pickup. And we do want to know that the ammo type of the uh, ammo pickup, but we don't need to have the enum in here. So make sure you go up to the top of base ammo pickup and include base ammo dot h. By including this file, you automatically get access to this enum, and thus we can still have everything that we had in base ammo in the past with the new changes. Now, the base ammo.cpp is very simple. In fact, for today, we haven't changed anything about it. So anything that you had in base ammo CPP can be moved to base ammo pickup CPP, and this is gonna be a base class for now. So let's look at the, the pickup. And all I have are my defaults. I've set the ammo type to be assault rifle by default and the ammo amount to be 20. All right. So I know that's an annoying change, but I've gone ahead and mapped out everything that I want to do within this first person shooter tutorial series. And I feel like it's the right change to do. So I apologize again for any inconvenience, but it is something that I think is important to show you guys. One final thing in case uh, there are any issues with this, since we did kind of move these classes around a little bit, we do have to make sure that our references are still good. Uh, FPS tutorial character was using base ammo in the past, so we do want to continue to use that. However, if you're not changing your names, so you name them differently than I did and you don't have to move your classes around, then you mainly want to make sure that you're including the class that has the enum so that we know how much of each type of ammo our character actually has. So one final thing we have to make sure of is that our FPS tutorial character is still, it still has an include to the class that has the enum for the e-ammo type. In case you moved it around or you ended up changing names of your classes, just make sure that the one that is included in your FPS tutorial character is the one that has the enum. All right. And with that, we can go back into Unreal in our base ammo resupply or base ammo pickup, whatever you'd like to call it. The one that looks like this, the pickup off the ground, click class settings and change the class to your new type. So instead of base ammo, I want base ammo pickup. And after that, you've successfully uh, done the, the change from ammo to ammo pickup. It's an important change for me. It may not be an important change for you, depending on the name of your objects and if you want to go through the trouble of doing that. Let's go ahead and create an ammo type. 
So we have our code for our ammo, which is essentially just a class with the enum in it, which determines the type. The rest we can set up in the blueprint for now. So we're going to want to add new blueprint class and then search for our base ammo class. This is our projectile and hit select. When you do that, it will make this uh, file and it will have nothing in it, but we're gonna add a few things. We're gonna add a static mesh. So add component up at the top, static mesh, static mesh right here. And this is where you will put whatever you want your bullet to look like. Now, this, since this is the base class, the base MVP, the parent of all of them, we don't wanna give this one a mesh. We won't be actually spawning this one. This is just here to set all the logic up for all bullets that are children of this. So instead, just create it and leave everything blank for now. And then we're going to want to also create a projectile movement component. Right here. Now for the projectile movement component, you can configure things about it if you'd like, but you also don't have to do it in here since we can set it in the child classes specifically. Just make sure that you have this class. It doesn't have anything in the event graph, but you have a static mesh and a projectile movement component. Then right click on your base ammo BP, create child blueprint class. You can do this once, twice for how many uh, different types of ammo you have. I'm gonna make different ammo types for all of my weapons, but for now I only need the assault rifle ammo BP. So that's the one we'll be looking at today. You can click open full blueprint editor if there's nothing in the event graph, it sometimes pops up with that. And then if you click viewport, you can see what I have. I actually have like a grenade launcher around right now, but it's not really important. This is just because this was the biggest one and I thought it was easy enough to see for you guys. But you can see now that it is a child of the base ammo BP, I have my static mesh and my projectile movement. So I can go to these components and now I can set my values. I happen to have these ammo types from the FPS weapon bundle off the Epic store, the Epic marketplace. But you can use whatever mesh you want if you have your own or if you have them from another pack. And then you can also change the material. So if I want to make it look different for whatever reason, I can make it look like that. Okay. And then for the projectile movement, I can set some certain values that are going to be useful for us when shooting our bullet. Before we were spawning an actor and basically launching it, and it was a projectile, it did have some data, but we, now we're going to fully configure it as opposed to just using what the first person projectile had. So we're going to be able to set our initial speed, and this is essentially the speed of when the shot is performed. So when it comes out of the weapon's muzzle, this is the speed that it has initially. This is not factoring in any drop off or anything like that. It's literally the speed that it comes out at. The max speed here means that this is the max amount of speed that the, the projectile can reach. Depending on the way your physics are set up and different things like that, your projectile movement component can make the projectile move faster or slower. So our initial speed is 2500, but our max speed is 2500. It will not go any faster than the speed that it shoots out. And then the projectile gravity scale is another good one to change. Uh, I put it to zero for no gravity so you can see it for now. Since this is the first episode and we made a lot of changes to our project over the, the last few episodes, it's pretty good to make sure that we are actually doing this right. That way you can see it. So I thought for debugging reasons, this could be very useful. But normally you'll probably want this at like a 0 0.1 or something small. Depends on how much drop off you want. And now you can see, if I either hold, I have a fire rate, because this is technically my pistol, so I have a slow fire rate. But you can see I'm shooting bullets, and there's no gravity, so it just kind of goes wherever. But cool. So there's our projectile working. Now. We need to do some things so that you can actually see that result, right? We created the bullet and that's wonderful, but we have no way to actually shoot it. We actually disabled this a few episodes back because where we were shooting it from wasn't the greatest. So let's go back into the code and let's go to the base weapon.h and we will go ahead and make a blueprint implementable event called fire weapon. And essentially we can do any logic that we wanna do in here. 
since this is going to the blueprint side, we could do things like mess with muzzle flash. So when you shoot a bullet, uh, it lights up the area around it, or it plays a little effect, makes a sound, actually fires the bullet, all that good stuff. Since it is a blueprint implementable event, then we don't have to fill out the data in code. In fact, we can't fill out the data in code, but we can call it from code, and that's what we're going to do. So I've made this in base weapon.h because each weapon could be different. So we want the fire weapon function to be different for every weapon or potentially different for every weapon. But in the FPS tutorial character, we want to fire it where we commented all that stuff out a few episodes ago. But you can see I had commented out a bunch of stuff over here and I still have it. This is, I, this is where we were determining if we wanted to spawn the projectile or not and how we wanted to do it. We no longer need to do it here. We no longer need to do it in code and we no longer need to do it this way. So I'm going to make our lives really easy and I'm going to clean a lot of stuff up right here. But I wanted to show you instead of deleting it because I know it can be confusing when I remove a lot of stuff that you guys are used to seeing. So this is in the on fire function of the FPS tutorial character. All this stuff we commented out was just to kind of keep it there as a safeguard if we needed it again. We can get rid of our comment that was actually spawning the actor of the FPS tutorial projectile. We no longer need that. We can get rid of the spawn location and all of this stuff because we are going to trigger the uh, the location to spawn at the muzzle of the weapon for each weapon. We can get rid of the motion controller stuff if you don't want it or if you don't need it. And if that's the case, if you don't need it, you can literally delete it like this. Okay, you can press Control KD to get everything in the right lines based on where they are within brackets and scopes. And there you go. Now this on fire function is much cleaner. There is more stuff afterward with playing sound and stuff like that. And we will be playing our own animation. You can get rid of it now if you like, but we will be playing it. So it's up to you. I'm going to get rid of it now. I know I'll be using the anim BP and including on the weapon, I will be playing an animation. So I don't need to actually play it in code. All right, so this is much cleaner. Feel free to take a look at this. This is the entire on fire function. You can feel free to take a look at that and figure out um, everything that we removed and why it is much, much nicer than what we were working with in the past. Now, the one thing we're adding here, see, we, we removed a lot of stuff, but we also want to add, instead of where we were doing the spawn projectile, we're putting fire weapon here. So the way this works is we're grabbing our weapons array, weapon index, and calling fire weapon on it. By doing this, we are calling fire weapon on the weapon that is currently selected by our weapon index. So if we switch weapons, our weapon changes that we're calling fire weapon on and different logic occurs. And we handle the logic within the blueprint of the weapon. So we call fire weapon. And now we're gonna finally clean up a lot of the stuff that we commented out. So all this stuff we have in our constructor, we no longer need. We're now setting this all up in the blueprint, and I wanted to wait to remove this until we did that. That way we could make sure this is the route we wanted to go. But we are good now. We have done everything we needed to do. So we can make our constructor that much cleaner. Our begin play can remove all of these attachments, and that's all we have to do in the code. Now let's go back to Unreal, and let's go to our actual weapon. So I have base weapon BP. And this is what base weapon BP looks like. You guys should be familiar with it because it is, um, it's something that we worked on when we were doing all the switch weapon meshes and being able to swap through different weapons. So this is one we already had. If you'd like to catch up on any of that, I'll leave iCards right here. All right. And another thing we can fix now because of the way we've uh, structured our weapons now, is remember we were doing this silly thing where we were selecting a weapon in the scene. So we selected our character in the scene, base character BP. We went to the weapons array down here and we added one to it and selected an element in the map. That's a terrible way to do it. We were doing that because we had no sort of actual way to keep reference to these. We weren't spawning them. They were only in the scene and our character was spawning with the default weapon. It's a pretty bad way to do it. Again, the reason we had to step away from the uh, first person template that Unreal offers. So instead, clear out your weapons array and your character. 
you should not spawn with a weapon. As of last episode, and I'll go to that right now, in our base character BP, we were spawning a weapon, and we were attaching it to our character's hands. Well, now that we have the ability to do that, what we should really do is add this weapon that we spawned to the weapons array, and we'll just access that instead. No reason to have any weird uh, references to things and all these hard-coded values. So in begin play, we were spawning this base weapon BP and attaching it to our component. That's wonderful. Before we attach to a component, or technically it can be after, but I think it's cleaner to do it before. Drag off your return value. Get your weapons array. It's part of your character, so you will have it if you've been following the series. Add unique. Drag in the spawn actor return value. And now this weapon will be added to the weapons array. So we have something in there, so it won't be null. And we'll actually be holding the weapon that we have and that we're supposed to be based on our weapons array. With that change introduced, we can now go into our base weapon BP. And you can see we no longer have that stupid reference to it in the, in the level itself. So now when we fire a weapon, it'll be firing from the base weapon BP and not something from the original Unreal template. So now we have multiple guns, right? We have the pistol, base weapon BP, the assault rifle BP, and the submachine gun BP. But we don't have to do any logic in the children classes. We only have to do logic in the base weapon BP. So we can now uh, get our fire weapon and fill out the logic. So if we look for the event that we just created or the function we just created, which was called fire weapon and click it, it will make this event. And see, I have some stuff up above here from overlapping with the weapon and picking it up, but it's not important for now. And what we want to do is spawn the ammo type, the proper ammo type. So we grab the weapon type of the weapon. I already have this as a variable. Then we do switch on e weapon type. Then uh, you should spawn every different type of ammo here because I've not gone over switching weapons and because the way we're going to switch weapons is going to be finalized in the next episode. Then uh, I'm going to leave this just like this for now. So all the ammo types spawn the assault rifle ammo. But you can spawn if you have all your ammo types ready, just go ahead and spawn them. And the way you do this is you do spawn actor from class. And we're going to pick our type. I want assault rifle ammo BP. That's the one where I've set up my values for my projectile movement. Okay. And you do need a transform to spawn an actor. So we need to figure out where we want to spawn this. We want to spawn this on the muzzle of our weapon, or if you have a different spot, depending on your weapon or, or item, if you have a bow, whatever, you're going to have to spawn this somewhere in particular. So what you can do is find your weapon skeletal mesh. You can usually just type weapon and find something like that, depending on what you would name it. Uh, for me, and if you're using the base weapon, skeletal mesh is a good one because uh, Unreal names these things as SK underscore so skeleton but you're going to need to do this for every weapon that you're shooting bullets out of for me we'll just do it for this the unreal one already has a muzzle socket so if you're using this gun all you have to do is use this socket and you're good it's literally that easy basically there is a socket in the muzzle of the gun for where the bullet should come out at all right so I'll show you where we use that in the base weapon in a second. But if you're not using that, say you're using a different gun, like this is my assault rifle, uh, it may not have a muzzle by default. This one happens to. But what's actually going on here is they're picking a point on the mesh, and I'll show you. So if I were to delete this, say I go to the gun root right here, I can go ahead and add a socket, and I can call it, muzzle you're going to want to call these the same for every weapon that way you don't have to look for a specific uh, socket it just makes your life a lot easier so just call it muzzle and you can put it on any of these if you want if you want to move it like there is a muzzle flash but say you don't have one that's perfectly fine all you need to do 
is move your muzzle out to your muzzle socket out to where you want the bullet to come out of. But yeah, I basically want to get this into place. It'll be somewhere around there. Looking at it, I think that's pretty much good. I can see it from every angle. I can see that it's in a good enough spot. And then this is your muzzle. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to actually tell the rotation of it. So sometimes it shoots the wrong direction. You can go ahead and move, either rotate your bullets or rotate your socket to match that. So you'll see when you're shooting your bullets that they're not coming out the right way, or you might not see them at all. Uh, make sure that your, your muzzle is facing the correct direction. But anyway, once you make your muzzle sockets here, then that's where we're going to spawn this actor. We're already spawning the actor in the base weapon BP, but we need a transform. We can get the skeletal mesh of the weapon. Each weapon has one, as you can see. So just drag that in. It'll automatically get it. And type get socket transform. Then you can leave the transform space the same for the socket name. Call it the name that you want. Muzzle is the standard in all cases I've ever seen. And then set it to the spawn transform. At this point, you'll fire the weapon. The weapon should be in the weapons array so the character will know, yes, this is the weapon I want to fire it on. Then the blueprint class will come in here. It will determine the type. It will spawn the corresponding ammo at the corresponding location. All right. And here, you should be able to shoot your bullets and see them. Since they are projectiles, they may have some wonky physics and shoot things like nobody's business. And that's okay. That's always something we can adjust later. But there you go. So now you can shoot bullets. Now what I recommend if you can't find your ammo type, like if it's too small or you just don't see it coming out, is to take the static mesh, make the size huge, whoops, Make the size huge and spawn it. I can see, ah, yes, this is uh, coming out where I want it to, right? So I can make it big. If I don't see it, I can decrease the speed. If I make it 250 and 250 as the speed, then I can see it here. And if I can't see it, then I need to shoot and I need to look around and make sure that I'm actually shooting in a spot where I'll be able to see it. They clean themselves af up after a while because that's what projectiles do with the projectile movement component. That can be adjusted as needed. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you can create your weapons that shoot actual ammo using the projectile movement component and we can fix up all of our loose ends that we had other than switching weapons which technically does work if you want to try it out on your own but we'll get in the, into that next episode anyway guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it helped you make your own ammo types now with our new new and improved system if it did, please subscribe. It does more for me and the channel than anything else you can do. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for going the extra mile to really show me support no matter what and help me, uh, help encourage me to continue these series. I, I love them and I can't wait to see where we bring them. If you need any assistance with this episode or any of my episodes, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description, and I'll help you. Uh, I'll help describe anything or help you with some of the issues that you had. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.